Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, we're going to be rating and ranking the windmills in Age of Empires 2. Now, I know what you're thinking. Coming to mind is maybe Japanese half price mills, Franks getting free upgrades, and so on. And that would be reasonable to do, but that's a different, less important list. Instead, we're going to be rating them based on how they stack up as windmills. That'll include considering aesthetic, historical, and engineering perspectives in equal measure to create a truly perfect and objective list. It sounds a bit random, but when you really look at the in-game windmills, there's actually a lot to talk about, and you'll never view the AOE2 mills the same way again. We'll start things off with the Mediterranean windmill, given to eight different civilizations. Now, if we want to get technical, and I always do, this is a post mill using triangular jib sails, which were popular around the Mediterranean. So one point for historical accuracy there. Another nice touch is that as you go up to Castle Age, the sails then get a bit more structure to them, turning into the classic medieval full sail, showing some technological progress over time as you age up. Bonus points for the little pergola in the back on this one as well, and it's just a nice looking and very functional historically accurate windmill to start us off. I'd give it 8 Don Quixotes out of 10. Next up for the American windmill, right away the contrast between feudal and castle age is aesthetically pleasing. That said, there's maybe a bit of a contentious point to be made about the wheel being used, as there's some debate about whether or not American civilizations knew about, or maybe knew but didn't use the wheel prior to European contact, though I'm not too worried about that, and I'm more thrown off by the creepy faces on the castle age mill if anything. Now we do run into a bit more serious problem though. If we pause and take a close look at the sails, notice they're being pushed out to the left. If we think about where the wind would be blowing to create that shape, it would have to be coming from the right and going to the left at that spot. And if we unpause, it should be spinning clockwise when viewed from above. When we unpause though, the windmill spins in the other direction. You can try this yourself, I promise I'm not reversing the video here. I've come across some speculation this is a mistake by the developers or Age of Conquerors art team. Yet, as we all know, developers don't make mistakes. That means this is in fact a magical windmill that works opposite to the wind, which you could argue is worth extra points if anything. Still, I'd only give this one 5 creepy stone faces out of 10. Moving on to the Indian mill, first off, the same quirk as the American windmill applies here as well. Zooming in on the feudal Indian mill, it very much looks like the panels, or whatever's being used as sails, suggest this should spin counterclockwise when viewed from above. Yet, if we play the video forward, it's spinning in the wrong direction. What's funny though, is it suddenly starts spinning the correct way the sails imply in Castle Age. This is actually the earliest style of windmill historically, called a horizontal windmill. And for having a nice little historical nod and paying respects to the classics, we have to give it some points. One problem though, is it's completely open for the wind to pass through. That might seem fine, but it's entirely possible this windmill wouldn't actually spin. I don't want to get too bogged down in the physics of medieval windmills, but I mean really, if not now, then when would ever be the right time? Put simply, horizontal windmills when viewed from above would typically restrict airflow on one side, shown here with a little structure added. You can see the same thing in real life examples as well, with this example from northern Iran that's around a thousand years old. The reason is, if it's lined up with the wind just right, the airflow pushes on one half but not the other, and it's that asymmetry causing it to spin. If you completely open it up, like the mill we see for the Indians in AW2, there's no imbalance in the forces, so there's little reason for it to spin one way or the other. That's just the theory though, and to get to the bottom of this and see if it would actually spin in real life, I went out to the Canadian prairies just east of the Rocky Mountains, one of the windiest places in Canada, and me and my team built a full-scale replica of what's shown in AW2. No, I'm just kidding. Guys, I'm a medium-sized gaming YouTuber. You think I have the budget for that? What am I, Veritasium? Best I can do is draw arrows on images from Wikipedia. As one final note before we move on from this one, notice we have a wheelbarrow here in the corner of the feudal Indian mill. The question is, what if you don't have wheelbarrow research yet in feudal age? Are they building a wheelbarrow before they discovered it? That doesn't make a lot of sense. Overall, I'll give this one 4 mysterious wheelbarrows out of 10. Moving on to the Middle Eastern mill, we get another variation here on the horizontal windmill. Again, I'm not sure this would actually spin, for the same reasons we just discussed. I do like that, especially in Castle Age, it has some pretty cool cog work going on, and all looks very intricate. There's also some nice detailing being added when you reach Castle Age, showing a developing level of tech and artistry, and this is just a good old fashioned Middle Eastern windmill. I'll give it 5 fancy cogs out of 10. 
Next up, for the Eastern European mill, this one's pretty straightforward with the elements of Eastern European architecture. Logs and wood roof and feudal, bricks and tile and castle age, though there's a nice extra touch, having the ivy grow up the building a little more between ages. I'd give it a generic 7 out of 10 for being inoffensive, if a little plain. Moving on to the Western European mill, this is clearly the one they sank the art budget into. In addition to just having a very practical stone first floor and simple wood structure above, we get some extra movement in the windows and guild signs. The other mills usually don't get this level of detailing and animation, and the gears are also a nice touch to make it feel functional. The castle age variation then improves the sails, closes things up, and ties down the shutters. I kind of prefer the shutter flapping in the wind in feudal, and I think it loses a bit of the original charm, but clearly is the more solid building. This might be my favorite so far, and I give it 9 out of 10 very British looking guild signs swaying in the wind. Next is the Central European Mill. This is basically just the same thing as what we just saw, with different colors, and its guild signs aren't animated. Honestly, it's a bit of a letdown after the last one, and it's another inoffensive 7 out of 10. Moving on to the Southeast Asian Mill, obviously points are going to be lost for using water instead of wind, as this is a windmill list. There's also a bit of an MC Escher thing going on, with the water somehow working its way back up to the top that I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around. I don't really know what to make of that, but we did establish a precedent of not deducting points for using magic, which I think applies here. This one then gets a nice glow up in Castle Age, especially on the roof, and we also get a sneak peek at some cogs, which I always like, and at this stage I'm adding a point for. I'll give this one 6 Pemro staircases out of 10. Next up for the East Asian Mill, again, it's not a windmill, though this one I have more of a problem with. The Southeast Asian Mill had the water clearly dropping where it should be straight down into the pool, whereas the East Asian Water Mill, on the other hand, has the water just kind of vanishing into thin air. I also have some concerns about one particular spot, and we'll have to zoom in for a closer look. Now my question is why would the water go up and into the chute when there seems to be an opening a little lower that isn't fully sealed? Again, I don't have the budget to actually build it, but I suspect a lot of water would be coming out the side. The structural support is also highly questionable to my eye, as there's a lot of water being held up, but I'll let any real engineers watching weigh in on that one. The Castle Age version is then much more believable with its stone base, and even hints at what I was getting at about the water leaking out of that one particular corner. Bonus points here though for the cool cog animation, and there's no doubt it's visually pleasing as a complete package, but as a windmill, I give it 4 suspiciously thin support beams out of 10. Moving on to the Central Asian Mill, we're back to our horizontal windmills, though again missing that crucial wind blocking part that makes the whole thing work. It's maybe a little bland at first glance, but historically this is probably pretty accurate, as windmills didn't have to be ornate in order to get the job done. Castle Age then gives a nice little improvement with the extension on the left, and I particularly like the continuity in keeping the same stick, just moving it out of the way. Everyone knows when you find a cool stick, you have to keep it. I also approve of the wooden beam across the top holding it together. Other examples like the Middle Eastern Mill in particular feel like they might just fall over without that support. I'm giving this one 6 cool looking sticks out of 10. Coming up on the end of our list, next for the African Mill, again minus 2 points for not being a windmill, but honestly props to them for animating an ox. That seems harder to me than most of the windmill animations, as if you've ever tried to draw animals before, you know it's really hard. That said, I hate to be that guy, I really do but it's glitching through the barrels in Feudal Age, which I bet they thought no one would ever zoom in enough to notice, but in this case I have to take away some points. Also in Castle Age, the sacks here in the corner grow and then shrink when the animation cycles for some reason, not really sure what's going on there. Lots of little dings against this one, and I don't even get a nice shot of a cog spinning to distract me. I think this one's just 2 inflating and deflating sacks out of 10. And finally, for the full work, instant bonus points here for the fact it's large enough to perfectly fit farms around. The fact it also functions as a house for the same cost as a mill and increases your food income is hard to ignore. Aesthetically, it then has a very chill tavern vibe, in addition to the windmill element. I'd say it's a 10 out of 10, and would be an 11 if it didn't have a wheelbarrow in front, regardless of whether you've researched wheelbarrow yet or not, which is probably bothering me more than it should. To be fair, a handful of mining camps in Dark Age also have wheelbarrows, meaning mills aren't even the worst defender here. That's my objectively correct, peer-reviewed, incontrovertible, Nobel Prize winning top 10 windmills in AOE2 list. Big thanks to James, Jared2142, Jockster, Justin, Samantha, Stephen, Woodruff, and corporate sponsor OpMain, as well as everyone else on Patreon for their amazing support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.